Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 21. That's right, this show can now legally drink. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week and I end every episode with a story. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week was a very exciting week to be a Black Templar player. Now, I know a bunch of weeks ago, Games Workshop teased a little something about Black Templar as being on the horizon. And everyone left a comment and reached out to me being like, are you really pumped for the Black Templar stuff? And I wasn't. Not really. It was one new painting revealed on a stream, and it's just kind of whatever. Like, I don't really get hyped by that sort of thing. I get hyped when there are models available that I can get. And that finally happened this week. There is a new Emperor's Champion model revealed. Now the Emperor's Champion is a perfect model to release to show off that you are going to do the Black Templar because it is a very uniquely Black Templar's chapter thing. The lore of the Emperor's Champion is that right on the eve of battle, someone amongst the Black Templars has a vision of the Emperor. He reports to the chaplains and the chaplains decide if he's telling the truth or not. And if he is, he's presented with the infamous Black Sword and Armor of Faith. And then he is thrown out onto the battlefield to fight the biggest and baddest enemies. Now, you can see this two ways. You can see this as the Emperor really giving his divine abilities to a Space Marine on the eve of battle. But the way I see this for the Black Templar is that they're so kind of evil and twisted that, and they're so indoctrinated that on the eve of battle, some Black Templar thinks that they've seen a vision of the Emperor. And the chaplains kind of get them to believe that he has and it's not him being particularly gifted or any sort of a miracle happening, but it is just him being so blinded by his own faith that he believes himself to be a better warrior and that actually makes him more deadly and dangerous. And the other Black Templar see him pulling off all of this badassery and they're like, hell yeah, we're the Black Templar and we're completely correct and all of the other Space Marines are wrong and bad. And so I love the Emperor's Champion. And I've, I've, uh, I've liked all the Emperor's Champions, actually. And this new model, I like this new Emperor's Champion, but I don't love it. But I'm very excited to have a new Emperor's Champion model, and I'm really excited because I happen to have the old Emperor's Champion and the old, old Emperor's Champion. And they're both new on Blister, and I kind of hope this new model is sold on Blister just so that I can have all three of them sitting right here, and I can have the greatest Black Templar unboxing video of all time. I would love that. It probably won't happen. It's probably going to come out in a box. One day it'll probably be sold separately, but I think it's really funny that I have both of these. And these are itty bitty models. On the website, they have a size comparison with this new model and it is humongous, but it should be. I mean, that's how big Space Marines are. And this, it is and isn't a primary Space Marine. Clearly, it's, uh, its armor is based off of Primaris armor because it looks really good and better than the old armor. But uh, it's it uh, it has the old an old school style of like breastplate and helmets. Uh, I've seen some complaints for this model that it's a little bit plain. And there's two ways you can take that in terms of like, is that a real argument or not? Because all of the Emperor's Champion models have been plain. The Armor of Faith is not meant to make a Space Marine of a higher rank. It's kind of like an adjacent upgrade. And all of the old models have plain looking armor. There has been art drawn of the Armor of Faith that has been really plain and really, really like covered in heraldry and stuff. I think I like the plain. I like that it's just a regular fella who's like dolled up to make himself feel better so that he does better in combat. So I like the armor how as it is. And I think the new armor and pose looks better than the old pose, but there's, there's like a bunch of asterisks there. The old pose, the new pose is the old pose. And I get what they're doing there. It's it's like a fun callback. It's an homage. It's paying respect to the old one. But eh, I'd like to see something new. And unfortunately, Games Workshop, and this kind of happens all the time, but the artwork that they drew, which is an amazing piece of artwork of a Space Marine double hand and the sword about to bring it down on some Necrons, that would have made for a much more unique and interesting pose than the one they went with. 
I, the pose that they went with is great. It's fine, but it doesn't knock my socks off like something new would have. And so that's a little disappointing. It's just a little meh. I don't want to be down on this model. I like it. I'm definitely going to get it. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't think there's really any alterations I would make. Uh, the sword is kind of being held in like a presentational way. Like he's, you know, standing maybe in front of some troops being like, here we go, brothers. Look at the, look at the black sword. How cool. We're going to go fight some guys. As opposed to like him getting ready to slice, which is fine. I don't mind that. It's kind of cool. Um, I think this is a model. Uh, I think this is a model that's going to look really, really good, like next to other models. It's not one of those models where I think people are going to get this model and then like go all out painting it incredibly beautifully. Where like, like you would see with some other HQ models. I think this is going to be like an elite, just guy who stands next to your other guys and looks really, really cool. Uh, but I'm really pumped for this guy. It's a really cool model, and I'm really excited for to see some more Black Templar models. If I was to make some predictions, I would say we're probably going to get a Primaris Helbrecht and a Primaris Grimaldus. Those are two very famous Black Templar characters, and I bet we see them Primaris-sized. I want to see them Primaris-sized. Uh, I really like those characters, and I think the current models available from Games Workshop look bad. They actually look so bad I don't own them. I really don't like those models, but I can't wait to see them done uh, newer and I can't imagine how they wouldn't be done better. But uh, I assume we'll get those two and then probably a new specific unit for the Black Templar that'll be the Crusade Squad. Crusade Squads for the Black Templar are the only thing unique about us really. And it's that uh, you can take a regular squad of Space Marines and you can outfit them with bolt guns or you can ha give them uh, chain swords and bolt pistols and you can intermix scout models into that. And historically, at least since like fifth edition, it has been a garbage unit. There's no real reason. The only reason to do it is you can get a unit of Space Marines to 10 models or to 20 models, but 10 of those models are scouts. And so they're not as good and you, you're spending a lot of points for models that aren't quite as good as your Space Marines. And it also is not a very lore friendly thing in game because the scouts, the neophytes, the uh, the the guys who are palling around and learning from the Black Templar initiates are just being used as cannon fodder and you're picking them off before you have to get rid of some of your more expensive Space Marines. It's never been great, but I hope we see a Primaris unit of this that uh, has its own rules that make it unique and it'll probably have... Uh, I wouldn't mind if it's not a mixed squad because mixed squads are always kind of annoying in game. It's like, am I hitting with the better strength or the worse strength? Do I, do I have to roll two different sets of dice for the two different weapon options? I wouldn't mind if it is a physically mixed unit that fights at one value. So I would love to see a squad that has Sword Brethren, Initiates, and Neophytes, and cool looking models for those things, but is all one conglomerate unit. That's what I want to see. How, how likely is that? Probably not very likely. I would bet that it's going to be a mixed squad and there's going to be different values and it's going to be kind of a bummer to play in the game. But I am still excited either way. And you know what? If it really sucks, I'll just use the models and run them as uh, regular old Assault Intercessors because Assault Intercessors are badass. But that's the Black Templar. I don't want to feel down. I don't want to sound down on it. I really like this new model. And I think it's really cool that Black Templar are getting some love. Uh, the new model is great, but it's not, it's not a like, perfect level up your Pokemon is evolved upgrade over the previous model. I think the old model is good and there's some things I didn't love about it and the new model is good and there's some things I don't love about it. And that's just kind of how it is, but still cool. Another interesting thing in the news recently is Games Workshop has continued to tease the new Kill Team box and it looks pretty cool. I've stayed away from looking about looking at the rules because I don't want to see them. I don't want like to get drip fed rules and then not be seeing them in context. I just want to get the whole book, play some games and see how it feels. I, I, I assume it'll be an upgrade. I think Kill Team is a great game, but I don't think it's a perfect game. I, def I think there's definitely room for improvements. And so I'm excited to get it in hand. And I was feeling like I'm going to do my best to get a copy, but I might not get to because we all know about Games Workshop and they're not having enough stock to meet demand. But they, with this new box, they've made a promise that they're going to try out a new thing where they're going to keep the order, they're going to keep the pre-order available for a certain amount of time, and everybody who places a pre-order is going to get a copy. Which, it seems pretty smart. They've done this before with Indominus, where they made 
you know, a certain number of Indominus boxes. They sold out instantaneously. And then, you know, they, they were like, okay, well, you know what? Everybody who wanted a box, but didn't get a box, place an order. We will make you a box and then we'll send it to you sometime in the next year. And it, it took a long ass time to get those boxes, but we got them. And it seems like that is how they're gonna be doing things moving forward, which is great. And it makes sense because, you know, they have to guess how many boxes they ought to make. And so now they're just gonna make a bunch and then uh, they're gonna they're gonna make them available for pre-order. People are gonna pre-order them. And if there's any more than what they have to meet demand, they're just gonna make it. What I'm interested in about this is I wonder how this works logistically because Games Workshop has to do a huge juggling act when they bring out these boxes because you know they have to have the tooling made, they have to have the machines that make the models made, or at least the dies for the machines made, and then they have to have prototypes of the models made up and then sent to the heavy metal team to paint them, and then the heavy metal team has to send those models to the photographers, and then the photographers send those pictures to the people who run Warhammer Community and the website, and so all of these all of these different areas have to work in tandem to make sure that the boxes are ready to go out for people. And so I wonder, like, is there a corner of the Games Workshop shop where, like, they just push the old tooling and stuff into the corner and they're like, OK, you guys, you guys are just going to be on call. If we get too many orders, you guys are going to make an extra 500 copies of whatever box. So, you know, keep the machines, keep them running, keep them warm. But we uh, just in case. Because they predict that you're going to get your box. If they have to make you a box, you're going to get it in a few months, which hopefully is true. Hopefully it's not going to be a year if you miss out on the initial box release. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really neat and it's really good. And I hope that they keep this up for every release. In fact, they even not so subtly teased uh, in this talking about the Kill Team box that there is going to be a Black Templar box on the horizon, which I mean, it's getting a little much because I got I got Dominion and now I'm probably going to get Kill Team. And now there's another Black Templar box. I mean, how many boxes am I going to need to get this year? And that brings up another thing I was thinking about with this. Uh, uh, I've been hearing a little bit about like Games Workshop release fatigue. And I want to bring up that you're not meant to get all this stuff. I, I do appreciate that they're pumping stuff out so that I can just look at it and decide if I want to get it or not. Because these these big boxes, they're special things. I think you're really only, you should only get like one a year, maybe two if you like play Age of Sigmar and 40K. I think, I think you really should take a good hard look at the box and say, do I want everything in there? Or do I want everything in there minus like one or two things, but it's still worth it because of the overall value you get out of the box. Like I definitely, I definitely don't think uh, that you should like get a lot of these boxes. It's too much. I have a big old pile of wargaming shame and it gets to a point where there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so many hobby hours in a week. How much can you get done? You know, it, you know, one of these boxes that has like 60 models in it. That's like a year of painting for for an average person who maybe even 40k is not their main hobby like maybe you also play video games and you froth you're probably not going to have as much time to paint as you know someone else might and so that box that might be your year of painting i mean painting takes a very long time especially if you want to do a good job so be 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 very cautious about these boxes i would say if you if you know if you look at a box and you're like that is this box was made for me that is the box to get. But if you're like, I guess I could play Scave and I should probably pick up this box. Nah, don't do it. Get like one box of clan rats and test the waters to see if you're really, really into it. The boxes, they're a deal, but they're not like an incredible deal. You get like one or two things for free, free. Like they're not incredible. So, you know, temper, temper your expectations. Make sure that you're making all the right and responsible choices. Uh, but you know, do get a box from time to time. They're a lot of fun. And if you're pumped for the new Kill Team box, we're also pretty pumped at Eons of Battle. And if you want to help support us making lots of Kill Team content, the best way to do it is to support us on Patreon. Over there, you'll get some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live on YouTube, a hobby hangout every single week, and more. But moving away from news and into what I worked on this week, I finished off these Legion speeder bike troopers. And once again, there's something about Legion models. I absolutely love them. They paint up quick, they paint up nice. And these models in specific got me thinking about something. And that is interesting, unique, dynamic poses 
versus a more neutral pose. This guy in particular got me thinking because this guy is so cool. He's leaning back. He's taking a pot shot with his little holster pistol. This guy, this guy is a box seller. This model is super interesting. It makes my creativity explode. It's really, really cool. But, you know, if I buy a second box of these guys, I'm gonna have two guys leaning back and shooting. And that's tricky because this guy, you know, he's appropriate. It's a very neutral pose. Guy driving a speeder bike forward, nothing wrong with it. Nothing too exciting about it either. I feel like this is the box seller, but then this is the guy you want. And it's kind of interesting because I don't want things to be boring, but I also don't want, you know, if I'm expected to buy multiple of these, which I'm not sure that I am, I'm not gonna want more of this guy's pose. I don't know if this, if the solution is just, you know, give us a second one of this torso in the box, or if maybe I just get over it and it's a game for children and uh, I can just use a little bit of imagination and creativity and be fine with two guys looking cool and leaning back and shooting. And you know what? I also do have, you know, hobby clippers and knives and green stuff. I could make this guy a little bit different. You know, glue his head on straight. Maybe he's throwing a grenade or, you know, maybe he's dragging an Ewok along for a ride. I could do some fun stuff. But uh, it just got me thinking. All Legion models are monopose, but they're so good. It doesn't really matter. Also, Legion seems to be a game where you don't need as many miniatures as like 40K. So you don't have to kind of expect to buy two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight boxes of the same thing you can get by with uh, with a much smaller number. And I just love, I just love these guys. They're so cool. And then one more Legion kit down. I'm really getting close on my Legion core set. I think the only thing left is one squad of Stormtroopers, one squad of Rebels and Darth Vader and Luke. I think that's it. And then I'll have a completed, finished, painted Star Wars Legion set. And in the not so distant future, I might be getting a game of Star Wars Legion in. <gasps> we'll see. But that is what I worked on this week. It was tons of fun and it was a very interesting week to be a war gamer. And now it's time for the memories. This show is called Models and Memories Weekly and that is because of the memories that come associated with the things that we build, collect and paint. And so this week, the story I wanna tell is all about, drum roll please. This. If you've watched our videos for any length of time, I'm sure you recognize my apron. And you probably just think this is some clunky, junky apron that I wear because uh, I need one. And you'd be right, but there's actually a lot behind this. You all know about my patch if you've been watching this series regularly. I have these two patches that are Imperial Cogs and I have this really cool custom patch that is half a new First Order Stormtrooper uh, pilot and the old Stormtrooper pilot. And there is a reason for both of these. Back in the day, especially uh, at the tail end of high school, I was getting into cosplay. I had been to a couple of conventions and had built a few cosplays, and I really, really wanted to finally build a Star Wars cosplay. I was perusing the 501st forums, I was perusing uh, the replica prop forums, and I knew I wanted to do a Star Wars cosplay, and I knew I wanted it to be an Imperial cosplay. But I had no interest in Stormtroopers because that's a lot of money and a lot of work, and I'm pretty short. And so I feel like I just wouldn't work out as a costume. I was also thinking Scout Trooper, a little bit of an easier costume to put together, but not for me. I think what I wanted to do, I, what I knew I wanted to do was I wanted to be a TIE fighter pilot. So I started gathering the necessary resources. These two cogs are worn on the shoulders of a normal ass jumpsuit that the TIE pilots wear. And uh, the only thing I needed was the helmets and I thought I had a helmet, but it turns out that the helmet I got wasn't very good. In fact, in fact, this is my helmet, and I, I, this is what killed the project for me. I bought this from another user on the replica platform, and it's, it's perfect, and I don't like it. This prop is beautifully made, very well casted, but it is, I made a big mistake, I got a movie accurate prop. I, ha I went back and forth with the maker of this and uh, I was very unhappy with it, but he was completely right and I didn't have a leg to stand on. This is movie accurate, which means that it is imperfect. It is made of, uh, this one is fiberglass, but it was cast off of a movie accurate original that was made out of 
vacuum-formed plastic, and hot glue and rivets. This prop is a casting off of a movie accurate replica. And movie accurate to me, I thought meant it was gonna be exactly like it was in the movie. Not realizing I did not want a prop that was exactly like the movie. This has tons of imper imperfections. It is not symmetrical. I feel like the details are very soft. Uh, it's really big, which is uh, a problem for me because I'm not very big. And so I look like a cartoon when I put this on. But uh, it is exactly correct to a movie accurate replica. It is very nice. Um, I'm probably gonna just sell this or try to get rid of it. I don't want to finish my costume with this. What I really want is I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna try to find an STL online and I'm gonna form it to fit my head. Like if you look at action figures of TIE pilots, they scale it appropriately. So it's not like this monster. Uh, the reason that the TIE pilot looks like this is because originally they were, uh, TIE fighter pilots were only gonna be filmed from the back. And so they wore the regular old uh, pilot helmet for the Rebels, but spray painted black. But Lucas decided that he wanted to see the tie Imperial TIE pilots' faces, and so they cut off the front of Stormtrooper helmets and hot glued them onto their spray painted black Rebel helmets. And that is how you get the TIE pilot. Super easy costume. You just really just need the helmet and a jumpsuit. But <sighs> this helmet is not the one for me. And so that is why the Imperial Cogs now hang on my apron instead of a really, really cool costume. You'll see lots and lots of paint on here. And a lot of it is from when I repainted the table. As you can see, it is lots of fun colors. And all of those colors ended up on the apron because I had some left over. There's a couple of little doodads. This was given to me by someone I worked with, this little Star Wars decoration. And uh, as you can see, all of these little safety pins. Uh, I used to wear this apron at work when I would do costuming. I did a lot of costuming for theater and this would be the apron I wore while I was putting it together. Uh, it was a little bit unusual. I knew the uh, the teacher that I had in college, he would wear an apron. He actually would wear this apron and he gave it to me because he didn't like it and I took it because it was free. And uh, But I liked that he wore an apron because it, it you become the stereotypical costume designer and so everyone knows who you are. And so all of a sudden I'm wandering around uh, and people know, oh, that must be the costume guy. I'm gonna go give him the costuming problems. And so I felt like uh, it really, it was like, it was, you know, they always say dress for the job you want. Well, this was the job I wanted. I wanted to be the costumer. So I have the apron with all the funny stuff and the, uh, and the safety pins because I am ready to work. In fact, what have I got in here? Pen, tape, and that's it. But this is a, a soft ruler for measuring people. This, this silly apron has been with me a long time and it has now been part of two different careers, a costuming career and a YouTube career. And I really like it. It's not the world's best apron, but it doesn't need to be. It gets the job done. As you can see, there is a footprint and that is my size nine Crocs that I wear all the time because I enjoy Crocs, but that is my apron. It reminds me of the different experiences I've had on, on in the job, in the industries. It reminds me of my YouTube career and it reminds me of my failure at being a Star Wars cosplayer. So a lot of fun to be had. If you want a TIE Fighter Pilot helmet, you don't want this one, but uh, there's plenty of good STLs online, I'm sure. And that is what I'm gonna be doing. Maybe, because I had like a really, a really well fitted one. So maybe I make it so like it can come in half and then like I magnet it together on my head. But, uh, but we'll see. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of options out there. And that, again, that helmet, I don't like it at all, but it is exactly correct for a reg for a real Star Wars prop because, uh, the, the props from Star Wars were not built very well. They were built quickly. They were built cheaply. Uh, they were built by assistance oftentimes. And so uh, that's really true of most film props is the beautiful, amazing thing on screen is actually something that's, you know, made of duct tape and chewing gum in reality. But that is my apron. You now know all about it. And that is my story for this week.
This is the 21st episode of Models and Memories Weekly, but it is now time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Rat Alchemist by Alex Ryder123, A Calidus Assassin by Squirrel Boy, An Illuminator Cesares by OK Tabletop, A Cryptech Plasmancer by Disco, A Phase 2 Clone Trooper Captain by Kenny, Some Classic Space Marines by Guy Man Hype, A Scary Fella by Unity, Some Skaven Plague Monks by Ty Lee One, A Stormcast Eternal by A Guy, A Necron Plasmacite by Goanga, Some Mark III Marines by Heathen Minis, Some Spooky Skeletons by Gorefield, a Chaos Knight by Simon Monkey Lobotomized The, Some Mummy Kings on Royal Chariots by Iron, Some Stormcast Eternals by Latchy Six Dice, A Squad of Imperial Guard by Prussian Blue, A Malifaux Pig Crew by Don Quixote, Some Salamander Space Marines by Duplicorn, Some Custom Xenomorph Aliens by Fuck Bobby Marketing Head, A Warhound Titan by Killian Treides, some Orc Mega Knobs by Katie, A Gnome Artificer by Erebus, Some Heavy Intercessors by Kaldor Drago, a Star Wars Armada repaint by Aldous, a Sister of Battle Canoness by Lookout Science, and a Chaotic Warband by Copyright Lawman. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.